most blessed sacrament as we prepare to celebrate the Thursday of the Lord's Supper. Our celebrant this evening is Father Brennan. We begin by praying together the diocesan prayer for vocations. O oh God, hear our prayer and let our cry come unto you. Bless our Diocese of Savannah with many vocations to the priesthood, diaconate, and religious life. Give the men and women you call the light to understand your gift and the love to follow always in the footsteps of your priestly son. Amen. Please join in singing our entrance hymn, Lift High the Cross. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace and peace of God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. And with your spirit. We welcome you this evening, the Thursday, the Mass of the Lord's Supper, the night when Jesus first gave us his body and blood in the Holy Eucharist, the night he established the Holy Priesthood. So we come together virtually at home, we're watching this Mass as we begin the sacred Triduum leading to the great victory of Jesus Christ at Easter. So let us bow our heads now. We ask God's forgiveness of our sins. We ask for the gift of purity of heart. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
us pray. Who have called us to participate in this most sacred supper in which your only begotten Son when about to hand Himself over to death entrusted to the church a sacrifice new for all eternity, the banquet of His love. Grant, we pray, that we may draw from so great a mystery the fullness of charity and life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, Your Son, who lives and reigns with You in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall stand at the head of your calendar. You shall reckon it the first month of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel, On the tenth of this month, every one of your families must procure for itself a lamb, one apiece for each household. If a family is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join the nearest household in procuring one and shall share in the lamb in proportion to the number of persons who partake of it. The lamb must be a year old male and without blemish. You may take it from either the sheep or the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month and then with the whole assembly of Israel present it shall be slaughtered during the evening twilight. They shall take some of its blood and apply it to the two doorposts and the lintel of every house in which they partake of the lamb. That same night they shall eat its roasted flesh with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. This is how you are to eat it, with your loins girt, sandals on your feet, and your staff in hand, you shall eat like those who are in flight. It is the Passover of the Lord. For on this same night I will go through Egypt, striking down every firstborn of the land, both man and beast, and executing judgment on all the gods of Egypt, I the Lord. But the blood will mark the houses where you are. Seeing the blood, I will pass over you, Thus, when I strike the land of Egypt, no destructive blow will come upon you. This day shall be a memorial feast for you, which all your generations shall celebrate with pilgrimage to the Lord as a perpetual institution. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, and broke it and said, this is my body, that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also the cup, after supper, saying, this cup is the, cup, the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be God. to God. Spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Before the feast of Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. He loved his own in the world, and he loved them to the end. The devil had already induced Judas, son of Simon, the Iscariot, to hand him over. So during supper, fully aware that the Father had put everything into his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God, he rose from supper and took off his outer garments. He took a towel and tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with the towel around his waist. He came to Simon Peter who said to him, Master, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but you will understand later. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, Unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. Simon Peter said to him, Master, then not only my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus said to him, Whoever has bathed has no need except to have his feet washed, for he is clean all over. So you are clean, but not all. For he knew who would betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. So when he had washed their feet and put his garments back on and reclined at table again, he said to them, Do you realize what I have done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, for indeed I am. If I therefore, the master and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow, so that as I have done for you, you should also do. The Gospel of the Lord. 
Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So tonight here at Blessed Sacrament, we begin the sacred triduum, the three days, the holy three days that lead to the great feast of the resurrection. Typically, historically, we call this Thursday Monday Thursday, and that word Monday comes from the Latin mandatum, because Jesus gave us a new mandate, right? And that is to love one another, not as you love yourself, that was what the Jewish people had always been taught, right? Love God with all your heart and soul. That's the first commandment. The second, love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus has raised the bar here. This is a new commandment. Not love your neighbor as yourself. Love one another as I have loved you. Which completely raises the bar. And so tonight, it's called Monday Thursday. For that reason, it is the beginning of the sacred triduum. Tonight at this Mass, we're trying very hard at Blessed Sacrament to make it as real for you as possible. It's very difficult to celebrate the high holy days of Christianity without you here, without God's people here filling the pews. But we're doing the best we can by having our our organist and our singers and our our deacons and, and to celebrate with as much solemnity as we can for you to really enter into these holy days. There are three very important things that the church invites us to meditate on with the Lord tonight. Number one, of course, the Last Supper and the institution of the Holy Eucharist, the Blessed Sacrament where Jesus gives us His body and His blood. Number two, the institution of the priesthood where Jesus ordained, if we can say that, His first priest, calling them, do this in memory of me. And then number three, the institution of the new covenant in His blood and that new commandment to love one another as He has loved us. And finally, number four, the the Holy Thursday Mass ends typically with a Eucharistic procession, which means we take the Holy Eucharist out of the tabernacle, process around the church in darkness, reminding with the candles, remembering that Jesus left the Last Supper and went into the Garden of Gethsemane to begin his terrible suffering in the garden. We cannot, of course, do the washing of feet tonight because of the, um, the virus danger, nor can we have the Eucharistic procession, but we will do everything to help us enter into these great mysteries. I think it's great and very helpful to remember that we're, this all began 3,300 years ago That was 1,300 years before the birth of Jesus, 3,300 years ago, where the Hebrew people were slaves in Egypt. And not only were they slaves in Egypt, they had been slaves for 200 years. How many generations is that? They lived in toil and slavery for 200 years. And at the end of that 200 years, God sent Moses the story that we know and have studied so well from the book of Exodus. And we remember that studying the Bible and all the plagues that God sent, right, to convince Pharaoh to let the people go. And finally, the last plague. Do you remember what it was? It was the blood of an unblemished lamb. A perfect lamb that was killed. Its blood was poured out. And God said to Moses to instruct the people... Take that blood and paint on top of the doors of all your homes. And when the angel of death comes through the land, he will kill the firstborn of man and beast. But wherever he sees that blood, he will pass over that house. And the people in that house and the animals as well would be saved because the angel of death would pass over because of the blood of the Lamb. That's why the Jewish people called this the Passover of the Lord, because the angel passed over their homes. Now, there were 600,000 Hebrew people. 600,000. If they did what God told them, killed a a male, an unblemished lamb, painted the blood 
then they would not die. But you know what? I bet you some of those six, 600,000 is a lot of people, isn't it? I bet some of those 600,000 did not do what God told them to do. Do you know what happened to them? They died. The firstborn male in that house, man and beast, died. Just like we die if we don't do what God tells us to do. And of course, the story is such a great story. We call the Exodus 600,000 people marching through the desert. The Dead Sea, uh, Red Sea opens wide and they march through and then God kills the entire Egyptian army is washed up on the shore and, these, and the Hebrew people look and say, wow, our God is an awesome God. He's the only one. And He's an awesome God. He has the power to save us. We need to hear that message, don't we, in the middle of this coronavirus crisis, don't we? God has the power to save us. No matter what happens or what this world brings, if we trust in Him and continue to do what He says. And so after they had been saved and inherited the promised land, God told Moses to um, enact a perpetual institution. Every year, the Jewish people took this very seriously. Still they do today. They celebrate the Passover, don't they? And they, that un, that they kill a male lamb and they paint the blood uh, on their doorpost in remembrance of when God saved them. Now we believe as Christians, the greatest salvation story is of course the Jesus' death and His resurrection. But remember, for 1,300 years, every single year, the Jewish people celebrated that Passover. That's a long time, isn't it? That's what I call a tradition. And that word comes from the Latin tradere, which means to hand on. What did our lecturer just say? I handed on to you what I myself received. I'm not making this stuff up. This comes from God. I'm just passing on to you what has been passed on to me. And that is that if we drink the blood of Jesus Christ, we will live forever. When you drink the blood of Jesus, you are never safer from death or any other peril. And that's why the Eucharist is so precious to us, isn't it? The real body and blood of Christ, that bread and wine becomes truly the body and blood of Christ. It saves us. Which is why when a person is dying, what is the one sacrament I want them to receive more than anything else? What is the sacrament of the dying? Holy Communion. That's the most important of the last rites. Because it is the only miracle Jesus did and does that promises that we will live forever. And so at the Last Supper, just as they had done for 1,300 years, Jesus and His apostles go into a room. They have the unleavened bread just like we use. They have the lamb without blemish. And then Jesus changes the words. He changes the words of a very carefully scripted supper, the Seder meal. And He takes the bread and says, this is My body. And He takes the, the wine and says, this is My blood. The Eucharist means everything to us. We are the church of the most blessed sacrament. Even if we weren't, we're a Catholic church, right? And we are a people of the Eucharist because the Eucharist makes us one body in Christ, which is why you can't close the Catholic church. No virus can close the Catholic church because we are one body in Christ, aren't we? Wherever we are, we are one in Jesus. And when we can't come to Him, He comes to you. That's why we started our Adoration Chapel because I want people to spend time meditating upon this great gift that Jesus instituted. It's not just that we have Mass so that Jesus can give us the Eucharist, for the Mass is the sacrifice of Christ, perpetuated. It is a perpetual institution. Every time we celebrate Holy Mass, Jesus offers Himself again to the Father, just like He did on the cross 2,000 years ago. He doesn't suffer again. He doesn't die again. He offers Himself again. And then He becomes one with us.
just as husband and wife, one in mind, heart, soul, and body. He loves us. He wants to be one with us. Everything in Christianity is about marriage. And that's why the last cup, at the Last Supper, Jesus changed the script. The cup of consummation, the fourth cup, Jesus didn't drink it. They started singing hymns. Can you imagine? You're walking off to your death and you're singing hymns of joy. He goes through the Kidron Valley up into the Mount of Olives. And then He says to His disciples, My heart is sorrowing. Please stay awake and watch with me for one hour. And that is our wonderful tradition, isn't it? Here at Blessed Sacrament and Catholic churches around the world, that after Holy Thursday Mass, we have time to, usually the, over in the gymnasium, we have a special altar set up. We, we can't do it this year. But what we're going to do is we're going to have a, a virtual Holy Hour in our Adoration Chapel. So as soon as this Mass is over, we're going to invite you, maybe about 30 minutes after the Mass is over or so, we will start a virtual Holy Hour in the chapel with the enthroned Jesus. So at home, you can sit with the Lord during that hour, or you can watch it later on and be with the Lord in that hour. And Jesus, remember, as He kept coming back to His disciples and they were asleep, do you remember? He kept, Jesus was praying, and what did He pray? Father, let this cup pass away from Me. The fourth cup, the cup of consummation, where Jesus gives Himself for us completely. And you remember, as the Lord was dying on the cross on Good Friday, that they took a sponge dipped in vinegar, sour wine, and they stuck it up when he to, to the cross. And when he drank, he said, Consumatum est. It is finished. And then he died. He drank that fourth cup himself by pouring out his blood for us. And this is what has been handed on for us. Isn't that wonderful traditions? How beautiful our faith is and how God has been preparing this for thousands of years. For thousands of years, He has been preparing this. The second thing we remember tonight is the priesthood, the gift where Jesus gave the, the Last Supper, take this all of you and eat, this is my body. Do this in remembrance of me. We believe in the Catholic Church that this is the anniversary of, of priesthood. I'm receiving calls all day today from brother priests all over the country saying, happy anniversary. I'm glad you're a priest. And I'm glad I'm a priest. And I love being a priest. This is the night that the Lord began the priesthood because we can't have the Eucharist if we don't have priest. And so it's a night where we thank God for the gift of the priesthood and we pray for our priest as well, understanding that, as I always say to young priests, with the day you're ordained, Satan paints a target on your back. You better believe it. He can read Scripture. Strike the shepherd, the sheep will be scattered. And we know that's true, that when a priest falls, he can take many with him. And so we want to pray. So many wonderful priests and priests all over the country. They're just wonderful, holy priests who love God's people. They pray. They're everything you would expect a priest to be. And there's, there's 40,000 in the United States alone. Almost 400,000 priests in the world today. For those of you who are listening tonight who might be called to be priests, I want you to really pray tonight during this Mass and ask the Lord to give you that grace and to help you to say yes to that grace. Finally, we remember the washing of the feet. Sadly, Jesus, we can't do it tonight because of the virus. Once again, we've been asked um, not to do the public washing of the feet as a, as a precaution. Um, but I did wash the feet of some of our employees here before the Mass because I can't let Holy Thursday pass without doing what Jesus did. He washed the feet of His disciples. Then He said, do you understand what I just did for you? And they said yes, which meant no. And Jesus said, as I have done, you must do for each other. You are here to serve. Live your life in the dimension of gift. You will never be happy until you live your life serving others. And when the Son of God of infinite holiness is kneeling in the dirt, a job reserved for slaves, and his knees were touching the ground, his toes touching the ground, his elbows, his nose. And he was washing the feet of his disciples. It horrified the disciples. It would horrify us too, wouldn't it? If the Son of God tried to wash our feet, we would say, No, Jesus, no. I should be washing your feet. 
He would say, you must let me do this. Because then it is really ingrained in our hearts that we must do this for one another. I'm going to invite you to do something at home tonight that you've probably never had an opportunity to do, but thanks to the coronavirus, I want you to wash the feet of one another. Even as the Mass continues, I want you to go and get a pitcher and some water, take off the shoes, and I want you to wash the feet of those around you. And remembering what Jesus did. Little children, I want you to take it very seriously. Don't get, don't get silly. This is what the Son of God did. And we should wash the feet of each other and serve one another. The Holy Thursday Mass ends by just having our hearts with Jesus as He begins His passion. Isn't that interesting that two words that are mostly reserved for marriage are also reserved for Holy Thursday and Good Friday. And that is passion and consummation. Passion of Jesus. Passion means we love someone or something so much that we're willing to sacrifice and suffer and, or even die for that someone or that something. And consummation means we give ourselves, just like Jesus did, heart, mind, soul, and body, everything we have, total gift of self. We give ourselves to another. The Lord is the bridegroom, and this is the night when He proposes to us, will, will you be one with me forever in heaven? Mind, heart, soul, and body. It's a proposal. We have to give an answer. And if the answer is yes, then we have to love the way He loves. And we need His grace tonight to do that. Many people listening tonight, your hearts are heavy. There's a lot of suffering. There's death all over the country and all over the world. Jesus is our hope. He's hope. I promise you that if we cling to Him, trust in Him, He's going to get us through this not just get us through it, but we're going to be better than we were before. God always does that. He uses suffering to make us better. So once again, I'll invite you after the Mass is over to, if you choose to spend an hour with the Lord, just thanking Him for what He's done for us and giving Him your answer. He's asked you to be one with Him forever. It's marriage. We need to give Him an answer and tell Him, yes, I do want to be one with you in heart, mind, soul, and body in heaven forever and ever. We imitate Jesus when we say, with regard to the coronavirus and all our suffering, the loss of our jobs, our financial struggles and concerns and worries, we say with Jesus, Father, take this cup away from me, but not my will, but thine be done. Happiness is to do the will of God. I wish you all happiness. Praise be Jesus Christ, now and forever. Amen. stand together now. The Holy Thursday liturgy instructs us that we do not pray the Nicene Creed, but we do ask the Lord for our special needs and intentions. On this blessed night, Holy Thursday, we recall the graces of the Last Supper as we pray. For the church, that we may live like Jesus and spend our lives in loving service, washing the feet carrying the burdens, and comforting the brokenness of one another, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all who have become unemployed, that God will quickly end the virus, open new opportunities for them, and help them find the assistance which they need to sustain themselves and their families. 
we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For doctors, nurses, and all hospital personnel, EMTs, police, firefighters, and members of the military, that God will protect them and guide them and keep them safe, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all our priests, that they may be strengthened and renewed by God's love, and following the example of Jesus, the great high priest, faithfully lead us in prayer and service, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That through the celebration of the Lord's Supper, we may grow in love and give fuller witness to Jesus, who is always with us, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all who are burdened by separation from others because of the virus, that they may, be, that they may know God's presence with them, and have their strength and patience renewed, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For a renewed belief, love, and devotion for the real presence of Jesus in the Holy Eucharist, the great gift which makes us one body in Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That those who have died, especially Pete Conniff, who died recently, and those whose anniversary we celebrate this week, Robert Oxnard, Michael F. Hennessy Sr., Ellen Eady, Ann Ware Lewis, and Charles Clark, Clark Poston may rise to new life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Most merciful Father, in the sacrifice of your Son is revealed the meaning of our life. May his love penetrate all that we love, that all that we love becomes more true and pure, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I invite you to please join in singing, Lord, who at thy first Eucharist. <laughs>
wash away my iniquities, cleanse me. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Please stand. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries, for whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For He is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer Himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as His memorial. As we eat His flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. As we drink His blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the host and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. <laughs> Therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer, firstly, for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Gregory John, our bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you alone. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day on which our Lord Jesus Christ was handed over for our sake, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogenus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, 
and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously, accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family which we make to you, as we observe the day on which our Lord Jesus Christ handed on the mysteries of his body and his blood for his disciples to celebrate. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless acknowledge and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer for our salvation and the salvation of all, that is today, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts you have given us this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gift of your servant, Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high 
in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember, Lord, your servants, those who have died, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is Yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
I invite you at home now to pray for spiritual communion. We bow our heads and close our eyes. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. singing movie Caritas. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that just as we are renewed by the supper of your Son in this present age, so we may enjoy his banquet for all eternity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Once again, I will immediately... Following the Mass, we will exit with the Most Blessed Sacrament. 
Um, Good Friday, of course, the church is empty. Without the Lord, it's without holy water, the light cloths, everything will be removed on Good Friday. And we will have the Stations of the Cross live streamed at 12 noon tomorrow, the service of the Lord's Passion at 3 in the afternoon. So I hope you'll be able to, to join us. Again, beginning at 8.30 tonight, we will have a live streamed holy hour. If the Lord said, could you stay awake and watch one hour with me in my, in my time of, of suffering? And so we invite you to, live, to, to tune in and to spend some time in prayer um, at 8.30 or whenever you want to tonight. Uh, and just be with the Lord and let's thank Him for all that He has done.